Afro Samurai is a unique type of anime. It was written by a Japanese mangaka, produced by an actor, and had its score made by a rapper. Long before American companies like Netflix would start producing their own bad anime. The story is about a black boy who witnesses his father get killed by a man called Justice and sets off to avenge his dad. Wait, wait, the villain is called Justice? That's already deep. To a lot of people, Afro is considered a cult classic. I think it's... So let's start at the beginning with Jackson. No, 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 not that one. The black one. F Samuel L. Jackson is a huge anime fan. I know it, you know it, I'm pretty sure the Chinese government knows it too. But he isn't like all these new convenient celebrity anime fans who are trying to hop on now that they know there's a market. He's had skin in the game as early as 2007. Same time people in my country decided to needlessly slaughter each other. And the first time I ever saw a man's real head get paraded around like like it was some sort of trophy. This moment in the anime wasn't fiction to me. But to find out why Sam made the anime, we need to understand his past. When his love for anime started, his favorite anime, and what the L in his name stands for. I'll see you on the other side. By the way, now that we're asking questions, how did people find out that the male G-spot is up your bum? Do you find something like that? Or do you look for it? Take our black asses out of here. Won't you take our black asses out of here? In July 2022, Samuel L. Jackson was considered the highest grossing leading actor in the United States and Canada. That's a long way from growing up doing segregated schools, being an usher during Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral, and getting arrested for holding the excessively white board of trustees hostage at Morehouse College with weapons and demanding they hire more black staff in high positions. His past is so wild that he even got warnings from the FBI. There was a fire in this man, a burning passion for equality, freedom, and the unbearable urge to shout mother f We've all seen the Yes I Do Hentai 2 interview that isn't overused at all. <laughs> In 1998, an OVA about a brutal assassin schoolgirl called Kite was released in Japan. The film was gory, exciting, beautifully animated, but it had some scenes with the schoolgirl. Some scenes that Robert Kelly might enjoy. Japan went a bit too Japan on this one. And some countries banned and blacklisted it. So it's considered a gentai. And Jackson acted in the live action re make of said film. We all know what happens when an anime gets turned into a live action. The character's eyes get way smaller. Jackson has been a fan of anime ever since he watched Ninja Scroll when it first came out. One of the coolest, most entertaining anime films. When he was in Japan, he stated, they gave me a big box of stuff and I sat down and watched a bunch of it and knew what was going on even though it was all in Japanese. They hadn't put any subtitles on it. Proving that even Samuel L. Jackson thinks that sub is better than dub. Shame on the dub watchers. Join me, join me. Shame! Some of his favorite titles include Black Lagoon and of course Ninja Scroll. Now at this point you'd think, hmm, Ninja Scroll is about samurai and Black Lagoon is full of guns. I wonder what these two elements will fuse to create. Takashi Okazaki was obsessed with drawing African-American characters as a teenager. Inspired by his love for hip-hop and soul music, he later decided to make his art even cooler by adding samurai elements to it and eventually developed Afro's design, which was also partially inspired by the legendary black samurai Yasuke. Okazaki later published the first chapter of Afro Samurai. Some time passed and a producer from Gonzo found the manga and decided to make a miniseries about it. Three years later and a trailer was made and guess who watched and loved that trailer. Jackson went on to produce and voice act in the five episode OVA and movie, basically carrying this project on his back. The anime was a collaborative effort between Jackson, Studio Gonzo, and Reza from the Wu-Tang Clan who made the music. Later on, the show would be the first anime nominated for an Emmy. It didn't win though. Why? Because it was ass. For what Afro Samurai sets out to do, it's okay. On the surface, the story isn't anything revolutionary. It's a revenge story. But the underlying message is full of the social activism Sam is deeply passionate about. It's Vampire Hunter D meets Ninja Scroll but black. Jackson and Afro have both fought immensely hard just to exist and be treated like 
people. It's the story of the black man in America. And I may not be American, but I felt it. The execution of the show, however, could have been better. I understand that the show is born from hip hop, but I feel like the approach Reza took with the music doesn't help the audience truly feel everything they should, especially in the more emotional scenes. Which was weird because he worked on Kill Bill, which was amazing. The Afro Samurai sequel film, however, is way better. I still enjoyed Afro Samurai, however, despite its flaws, and I'm grateful that it exists. This show means a lot to a lot of black people. We finally had our foot in the door. During my first viewing of Afro, I didn't consider it a classic. Not with the likes of Cowboy Bebop or Perfect Blue or Akira, but after a rewatch, I gained a better understanding of its message. While other anime are classics because of their stories, Afro Samurai is one because of the story behind the story on screen. A story of struggle, fighting the power, and the challenges that come with it. Real art touches people while still expressing important ideas and feelings, which is why we love anime so much despite not even being Japanese, and Afro Samurai does that, and that's mother amazing.